back everybody to the Meeple Marathon and my full and honest review of Shadows of Killforth. Um, this is just the um, retail version or the base game. Um, this is not like the all-in Kickstarter version. I don't have the mats. I don't have any of the uh, expansion content um, or any of the like upgraded Pimp My Shadows um, um, stuff. So this is basically just the base content that I did have to get from Hall or Nothing Productions website, however, in Belgium. Um, but it shipped, uh, the shipping wasn't that bad. It, it came, um, you know, a pretty good rate uh, over here. So um, it is available uh, to purchase retail. So as always, I'm going to give you the things I don't like about the game, which for this one is not much. I honestly had to kind of think about it. Uh, what I have mixed emotions about and what I love about the game. So let's get started here with what I really don't like about the game. And um, <clears throat> for starters, the reference sheet here. There's a lot of stuff on here. There's a lot of text. I know that in the Pimp My Shadows um, upgrade pack that you can get this as like a bifold sheet. I could probably fold this because it, it looks to be the same size from what I can tell from other people's unboxings. Um, they just took it and they, they folded it into threes. So it's more like a pamphlet or a menu or something like that. Um, but this isn't really a reference sheet if there's this much information on it. It's just a mini rule book. Um, you know, but it is nice to have this around. I have used it, but it is still way too big in my opinion. And it is missing, in my opinion, two incredibly important charts that would um, be very useful to have, especially early on. And those are both found on page 15 of the rule book. Uh, I mentioned this in my playthrough and my how-to video, but this keywords, unique keywords table here that tells you, all right, if you're looking for the keyword rebel, where am I gonna find that in an ally? Or if I'm looking for the keyword reputation, where am I gonna find that in a title? When you are playing the game and you're looking at what you need to complete your saga, uh, the very first time I played, I did not remember this was here. And I looked on the rules reference sheet, it didn't tell me. And so I was wandering around forever trying to find this specific keyword. I don't remember what it was. Um, then I discovered that when I went back and reread the rules after my initial playthrough and was like, oh, I could have been zeroed in on this the entire time. So, Really, that's the kind of stuff I want to see on the rules reference sheet. Um, and maybe not so much all of this text. Um, so the, the rules reference sheet were kind of a bust for me. And the only other thing, honestly, and this is getting nitpicky, is the big empty box. Um, this, and if you watch my unboxing video, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But this is essentially the box. Um, it's, you know wider than it is tall so it doesn't quite you know fit with all my other boxes um but the cards when i've got them all in here only come a little bit past halfway if i had sleeve them maybe i'll fill up this whole row but to my knowledge there's not even enough expansions even if i had gone all in on the kickstarter to even fill up this other one over here this one in the center is definitely designed for your um, resources and things like that because it's too skinny to fit the cards, um, but I don't really see why the box is so big. Uh, it just feels big and empty when you first open it up, especially. Um, that being said, however, I feel like there is exactly enough cards in this game um, to, to make the game work and to make it beautiful. So again, I don't know why they made the box so big. Why not just make it more square, um, you know? But again, that those are literally the only two things that I could not that I had to think about and, and that's getting nitpicky. So let's move on to what I'm kind of mixed emotions about. Um, and again, th this one is getting pretty picky here, but the components um, are kind of uh, a mixed thing for me because most of the game is cards and the card quality is perfectly fine. Um, I know that if you get the Pimp My Shadows, you get the larger tarot size locations, which I think would probably come in handy, but that would also make the map bigger. So I don't really know if I want to go that direction. Um, but the card quality is fine, and that's 90% of the game. 
and these tokens are perfectly fine. Um, I don't understand, you know, why they picked clouds for obstacles. Um, you know, that choice really doesn't make sense for me. Um, and the broccoli token just seems a little funny for me, or like the fate token, why this is a blue hourglass, I don't know. He may have been making use of tokens he had already established in previous games that meant something different, and that's fine. But otherwise, they're nice quality. They're nice wooden colored tokens. Um, the dice are nice. I wish they would have given me more. So I guess that's kind of a mix. Um, you know, very quickly throughout the game, I end up rolling, especially in fight and combat instances, I'm rolling more than six dice. So I'm having to like re-roll all of these. I know again, Pimp My Shadows gives you more dice. So, um, you know, that's a, I guess a great marketing um, tactic for, for Tristan Hall is having that upgrade pack. Um, but these are what I am really just kind of these uh, enemy and uh, I forget what the flag side is called, but these just don't fit. These don't fit with the game. Um, and the the Rose, Rose and Knights and the Doom Guard choose your side token, they're okay. The artwork at least fits in line a little bit more, but it's more just this big gray token. Um, but these tokens don't even really fit at all. I'm okay with the loot tokens. Um, honestly, if you were to create something that I would say I can't live without in the Pimp My Shadows expansion or upgrade pack, it would be like acrylic loot tokens and something better than this. This just, this kind of random colored skull, which I, I guess if I was this, I was I would be the color purple. Um, that's the only thing that signifies me versus anyone else. It doesn't match my hero color or anything like that. But these just don't fit. Um, and uh, during the unboxing, I, I made this comment how they, they, the cardboard seemed like it was gonna be really cheap. Uh, it really was just how they did the cardboard punch outs. Most of the time you see each punch out has its own individual space and it's bordered around by the firmer, thicker cardboard. These were like patched in all together so that, you know, one was bordering another. Um, and so there was a lot of give in them because they were punch outs and it makes sense now that I did it, but like I, I have no problem with these little standees. I don't need miniatures. That's The standees are perfectly fine. Again, I, I would have liked to have run around with my Were Tiger uh, in my playthrough as opposed to the Chevalier class figure, but again, that's a Pimp My Shadows upgrade pack. So there's a very good chance I may be looking into getting that pack here in the future, but the components were kind of mixed for me. Um, and mainly it's centered around the, the cardboard stuff and not the cards or the wooden pieces. Um, next is the rule book. <clears throat> this rule book's okay. Uh, there's just a lot in here. Uh, it took me a little while to get through this, um, and I've had to reread it a couple times just to make sure. But everything's in here. Every question that I've had is in here. Um, it, when I go back and reread it, it's very clear. It just, I feel like this rule book is thicker than it needs to be. Um, I feel like I was able to talk uh, through the game and my how to play video more easily than this rule book does uh, and covering everything. It's almost like this rule book is too wordy, which is why it's a mix, because it covers everything you need, everything is there. I don't feel like I'm confused about anything. I'm not sitting on BGG on an FAQ page like I have been for other games, um, but it also just seems to be bigger and, and more intense than it needs to be. And the last thing that I wanna say that is a mix for me is the randomness of encounters. Now, this is a mix, um, this is, towards the negative side for, for two things. One is, I feel like every game, this big bad monster fella here with nine health rolling nine dice comes out in like the first three rounds. And I always seem to be stuck to the point where I, even if I sneak past him, I don't have any action points left to move and he kills me, knocks me out and I'm back in the Manashoba Shrine. Um, also, uh, especially in my last playthrough, I was looking for a very specific keyword that was a stranger card. Uh, I knew that my chances of getting them was best in planes locations. So I literally sat in one location, did not move and just continued to search and search and search until I milled through. You can see that 
um, you know, I haven't reset the game or anything. This is my planes deck. It's almost empty. This is the mountain deck, just as an example of where I went. I had to go through almost the whole entire deck and just how I shuffled it, a good chunk of the strangers was at the bottom. Um, and there's really no other way to get around that because you need a stranger keyword to advance. Um, I do know that there are some cards that allow you to say draw two planes cards and pick the encounter that you want. That's helpful. Um, to my knowledge, there's nothing that just says pick, look through the deck and pick a specific keyword, um, anything like that. So I'm really, I'm okay with the Gargantua coming out early. Uh, it definitely makes you feel like you are not ready to take him on yet. He smacks you around. It's not game over. You don't lose the game. You just get knocked out and you kind of do a reset at the Manashoba Shrine. Um, but it would be nice that that big giant beefy card doesn't always come out so early in the game. Um, and also, you know, it would be nice that I wouldn't have to mill through an entire Plains encounter deck to find a stranger. But at the same token, um, the randomness of the encounters is also nice. It's also part of the game that sometimes I'm going to flip over a quest or like this place that even comes in the night deck. Um, but even the, the randomness of the night encounters, they're not always bad. Um, sometimes they're weather, sometimes they're nice places. Or this quest that uh, is really unique because it takes an ally. And if you go and rescue that person from being kidnapped, it's, um, you get that ally or these places that change how you interact with that location, like the major earthquake that racks open the frozen portal. Um, you know, I, I, I also, I didn't like having to mill for a stranger, but I also really like that the encounters are very random. I could get a quest. I could get a stranger. I could get a place. I could get something that's really nice and easy to pass. Um, or I could get something really hard that I have to draw an extra night card for, but it's also giving me five gold in the title. Um, so yeah, that's why it's a mix, but it's, it's more so on both of these are more so really, they're not negatives. They're more so on the positive side. Again, I've really had a hard time coming up with bad things to say about this game. Um, so let's move on to what I really like about this game. And the first thing, which we just kind of covered, is the exploration aspect of the game. The fact that there's this map created of these cards. It's going to be random every time. It's going to be a little different. Um, there's shortcuts in here. There's ways to interact with uh, some of the locations. They take away AP or grant you AP, things like that. There's always this shrine in the middle that you can do the market action for. But just how you're moving around, there's four different types of locations. That seems to be a good number. Uh, so it's not overwhelming the different types of locations you can get to, but each one's kind of tied to a set of encounters and like a set of rewards. I just really appreciate how this game forces you to move around and explore the map, but this is not Seventh Continent. This is not, um, you know, an exploration survival game. It's just this really nice, tight exploration game that involves these encounters and tests. And, um, yeah. Um, and so in conjunction with exploring and like I just mentioned how certain rewards are tied to certain locations, I really love this whole choice of your reward. You get a choice of how your encounters reward you aspect. I think this is a beautiful way to um, resolve the encounters and make them worth doing, obviously, is, all right, so am I going to take the gold or am I going to take loot tokens? You know, you're going to need gold to do things like regale actions and possibly purchase things in the market, but oftentimes that gold really isn't worth it, but you could get you know, you could pass up one gold and get a four gold token out of the loot bag. So it's really kind of risky. Um, or it's not risky, but it's it's a choice that you make. And I enjoy having that choice to make. But also this whole aspect of do I take the card as a rumor? Sometimes you have to take the card as a rumor. Or you may just want to take the card as a rumor because you can then spend a rumor in place of a fate token later on. Uh, but you don't want to fill up your hand because you can only hold six cards, six rumors in your hand. Um you know, do I want to take a title? Oh, I already have a title as an asset and I have one in my hand, but maybe the one I draw would be incredibly um, beneficial to me. And just those choices that you are asked to make when you defeat an encounter or an enemy um, are just a beautiful aspect of the game. Um, and I really 
just enjoyed every time I defeated a counter, getting to decide what am I going to do with this card um, and how am I going to choose my rewards. Next, um, this one should be obvious, but and a lot of people have have spoken about a bit this, but the artwork is beautiful. Um, this is one of the best looking games in my collection, and I have a lot of games where there is really good artwork. Um, you know, I really love Ryan Lockett games. His artwork is beautiful, but this is different. This is a little more realistic, um, you know, very fantasy driven, um, but you know, some of the pictures are clean. Some have this, you know, dirty used look to them. It's just the world he has created through his artwork is just incredible. And so this game is just beautiful to look at. The locations are beautiful to look at. You almost don't want to cover them up with the encounter cards um, because you just want to look at Heaven's Gate and, you know, or the wielded heart here in front of me. Um, so just the artwork. If you are someone who appreciates artwork, this game is worth it for the artwork alone. If that's a big plus for you. And the last thing um, that is a major part of the game and a major plus for me is how your hero grows throughout this exploration adventure. Again, I have said it's just cards. This game is literally nothing but cards and some tokens, a handful of tokens, majority cards. But you go from being this, you know, four HP, four action point person with just your class bonuses to having this full suite of assets at your hand to rolling like double digit dice when you attack having eight health and eight actions you can take on a turn and all these different skills you can veil all throughout the saga uh, i love the fact that you have to complete this saga and if you're playing with someone else they have to complete an entirely different saga uh, to level up and just this whole system of how your character levels up and how you start small and again like i said i'm really okay with the gargantuan coming out early and kicking my butt I probably could have gone, he, he stayed on the map, I didn't want to mess with him, but I probably could have gone and gotten him near the end of the game. Uh, and it would have been very satisfying since he kicked my butt so early in the game. Um, but just the way you level up your hero, um, where you, you get that uh, extra health and all your health equals your action points. So you're able to do more things on your turn, you're able to survive longer in battle and the skills um, that you get and having to choose between which one of these do I want. It's not, you know, I'm not given five skills. I'm not told that this is the skill I have, but I get to choose one or the other. Um, and there was a tough choice I made in my playthrough on that fourth level skill where I was like, mm, this one's better. I can add tokens to this and it's going to give me guaranteed successes. Well, I didn't realize that the totem I was going to get from my saga finale would have given me three um, influence and really pushed me over the edge, you give me a ton of dice to roll. I still ended up, you know, beating the, the Bishop of Pride or whatever his name is. But, you know, that's a choice I had to make. And next time uh, around, if I play with that, the pious class and that same character, I probably would go the other direction. But choices, I'm given choices. I like choices. Um, I love having your hero upgrade. It felt very Mage Knight-ish. How in Mage Knight, when you upgrade, you know, your hand size gets bigger, um, so you can do more things, um, but also then your um, suite of cards in front of you, you can do more things, you have more allies and, and things like that. So it felt very much like Mage Knight and how your, your character gets stronger and stronger throughout the game. Um, so that's really all I have to say about the game. Uh, just in general, my overall review for the game, if you are um there's a little bit of setup to the game because there's a lot of cards you have to deal out randomly and a lot of stacks you have to shuffle but it really wasn't that bad but if you're a person who does not like skill tests and um having to roll dice for skill tests so there's there is randomness in the dice and there's luck involved in the dice i personally have been playing with the variant that's in the rule book i'm not cheating where fours fives and sixes count as successes so 50 percent of my die counts as a success normally it's only fives and sixes which is very akin to arkham horror um but you can play however you want but if you're not a fan of like how arkham horror works where you're skill testing skill checking everything and you're just trying to roll high on your dice and if you roll poorly you just miss um, this is probably not the game for you because almost the entire game is moving around and then skill checking with your dice. But 
if you are a person who enjoys the look of a game, how a game looks in front of you and the artwork of a game, if you enjoy games where there is a, you know, a little bit of exploration. Now this isn't a dungeon crawler, there's no tiles, it's just cards, but it's really well done the way the cards create this map. Um, and if you are a person who enjoys character progression, if you like starting small and getting to a point where your character, you feel like you have made some good choices in the game, um, this is a solid game for you. Um, again, right now, it's a little difficult to find because you have to go directly to um, Hall or Nothing Productions in Belgium to get a copy, but copies are available. Um, I don't know what um, level of availability it will be in the States here in the future. But, and this is also just the base copy, but I feel like there's enough here for a lot of plays, especially if I like sit it on the shelf for a little while and then come back to it. I will have kind of forgotten about all these fabulous cards or fabulous combos you can create. Um, you know, I've seen very different items and attires and allies in, in all of my three games. So there is enough cards, even though the box is mostly empty. I'm not complaining about the amount of content. I'm complaining about the fact that it's a bigger box than it needs to be. Um, the amount of content in here is beautiful and they've done it with just like a decent stack of cards, some dice and some tokens. Um, so I highly recommend Shadows of Killforth um, as, as a game in general. I have been highly impressed and I'm, I'm very excited to experience more or to see possibly what else Tristan Hall has to offer because this is my first Tristan Hall or Hall or Nothing Productions games, but I'm, I'm sold. And he may be one of those people like Ryan Lockett who pretty much anything Ryan Lockett produces, I'm on board for because, you know, I love his game styles, his art styles, and just, you know, I, I can't find anything wrong with his games either. So, um... If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.